Right. And that kind of changed my idea. I wanted to use the running as a way to get a scholarship to go to college. Uh -huh. And in that moment, it kind of took my life away. And running was my life. Like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Yes. To me, even at, as a teenager, it was unacceptable. It's like, there's got to be a way. Like, stop running wasn't a viable solution. And I thought, hey, there needs to be a better way. That's I how I stumbled across a sports medicine chiropractor uh -huh. who fortunately worked on UCLA Olympic athletes. I got into aviation for the focus and concentration. Uh -huh. And then that kind of later led to um, uh, an airplane accident and I sustained some injuries there. Oh, I had a fracture to my right fossa that had to be surgically repaired. Uh -huh. And I have a lot of compression to my neck and my back that I have to deal with daily. Yeah. Uh, so just backtracking just a little bit, it's the history. If the doctor takes the time to do a good history, you pretty much 99% of the time, you know exactly what the problem is and you know exactly what to, how to treat it. Um, so that's really important is to find a practitioner who listens to um, everything that's going on, not just the possibility of your neck pain or your back pain, but the background of what's going on. Um, to me, I wouldn't want to go to three separate people and that just demonstrates blind spots in, in their education and it's okay. We just have to seek someone who can actually help ourselves, our unique self. Actually, acupuncture is amazing and it is considered a, a electric energy or mm -hmm. electric medicine, which you're gonna see more and more of this in the future, um, electric type of medicine, that's yeah. the medicine of the future. But acupuncture specifically, um, it treats the body, like in a nutshell, um, it helps the body to heal itself. Um, and you can treat the whole body at the same time. Uh -huh. So what's interesting is someone can come in, let's say they have headaches, allergy, digestion, anxiety, um, and back pain. Uh -huh. um, you can treat the whole body. You don't have to compartmentalize. for the surprise. <laughs>
problems? Well, usually by the time they get to my office, they have physical, they have physical pain. Right. <laughs> right. So they either have chronic neck pain, chronic back pain. Um, you know, they're just not sleeping good. They're not feeling good. So they don't necessarily know. So we just have to dig a little deeper. So when I'm treating them, if it doesn't come out in the history mm -hmm. and within a few treatments, they're not better. I start digging around like low back pain. I start asking them, well, how, how's your stress level? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Do you have stress at work? Do you have stress at home? What are you stressing about? Do you have financial issues? If that's the case, a lot of times financial issues are linked to the low back. I see. Yeah. Interesting. And so, so we want to put all that together. It's like, yeah, we want to treat you physically, but then we've also got to figure out how are you going to um, deal and handle your stress so that the back pain has, has an outlet so that you're not holding your stress in your back pain because you're, now you're taking action to whatever is the stressor. So if it happens to be financially, well, then we gotta figure out a way for you to start taking actions to change your financial stress. And what would you say some of the risks are to getting treatment? Um, the risk really is really actually pretty low and, and slim to none. The only thing that pops into my mind and most people is they're always, and physicians, they're always worried about somebody having a stroke by having their neck adjusted. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is that if someone's gonna have a stroke, they physiologically have something wrong already. Mm -hmm. And you can pretty much tell, like we do um, different orthopedic tests, and you can see those kinds of things. So you know whether or not it's safe to adjust someone. And then also you can check their blood pressure, you can ask their history. And if you suspect that there's an issue, you might not wanna adjust their neck manually you might want to give them a more gentle adjustment with a technique called um, activator oh yeah and or you can do some soft tissue and you can just hold the body so there's many ways to um, take care of someone and if they were going to stroke out there's other signs and symptoms that are occurring yeah and so sometimes unlucky enough there's like one or two people in history that got adjusted and had a stroke so now everybody talks about Oh, you don't have a stroke if you get your neck adjusted. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you that that happens very, very rarely. And the circumstances, if you take a good history, you're going to know if in fact it's safe or not safe to give this person an, an adjustment. So you can adjust infants to golden agers. It's uh -huh. just a different approach and people don't know that. Babies need sometimes need to be adjusted and elderly need to be adjusted. Yeah. It's just how you approach it, so. And what ages do you work with? Do you work with babies? Have yeah. you ever worked with babies? Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> uh, from infants to, to elderly. Yeah. Um, babies actually, very colicky babies. Um, treating them gets rid of their colic. The young children that, that end up having, that get sick all the time, sore throats and stuff, uh, the doctors wanna put tubes in their ear. If you adjust their neck, they don't need tubes in their ears. Uh -huh. You help their immune system. They don't get sick and sore throats anymore. So, and then you, you know, teach them the nutraceuticals that they need and the lifestyle that they need to stay healthy. Yeah. So it's all about just looking at it from a different perspective. Right. You know, babies can't really tell you. Oh man, my neck. They can't tell you, yeah. but you can find it. You can feel uh -huh. it. You can look for it. You, you just observe. You ask different questions or you ask the questions of the mom mm -hmm. and find out what's going on or the grandparents what's going on let me see that baby let me take a look <laughs> and that's see what's how, going on yeah, yeah. that's uh -huh. how you and you know you can apply the theory of acupuncture to to infants and stuff you just kind of rub the little acupuncture points uh-huh you know there's yeah. you can use electronic acupuncture do you like on babies do you do the acupressure or do you actually put a needle you can do acupressure and then you can use electronic acupuncture oh and you kind of use the mom as the grounding and then you use it's kind of like a it's a tens unit with a, a probe on it and uh -huh. you can stimulate the acupuncture point. oh yeah or you yeah. can tap an acupuncture point so you can always use the theory of acupuncture it's just the way you're going to apply it
So would you say that every patient should receive this kind of care, like chiropractic, acupuncture, and what would be the indications for long-term treatment? Yeah. Um, I definitely think that everyone can benefit from chiropractic care in one way or another. It just, it all depends on our unique body, but I think everybody should be adjusted whether you have pain or not. Pain is a really poor indicator, and when you're being adjusted, it keeps your nervous system um, functioning properly, mm -hmm. so it helps your, so not only does it, it helps your immune system, it also brings more oxygen to the brain and to the body, so being adjusted regularly doesn't mean that you have to be adjusted all the time, it just means that you have it throughout your lifetime, mm -hmm. you know, so different people's needs are different, sometimes people can maintain their health once a month, once every three months, that kind of thing. And, and when we have this in our life as, as a normal um, routine, you can prevent if you have a back that typically goes out in the, in the winter time. If you're getting adjusted regularly, your back's not gonna go out because you're, you're in alignment, the muscles are holding you the way it should, and then you're not gonna have these bouts where, oh yeah, every December I throw my back out. Mm -hmm. You just won't have those conditions. You won't be catching colds and flus because your immune system will be stronger for it. So personally, yes, I think we should be adjusted throughout our life with and without symptoms. And what about acupuncture? How could that benefit us long-term? Yeah. What, what's the indications and how does it work long-term for us? Yes. So acupuncture, um, there's different kinds of conditions. We have an acute condition or chronic condition. So when we're treating uh, an acute condition, something that's just happened, we wanna do acupuncture close together, like maybe um, two times a week for a couple of weeks. And as soon as the body starts to show improvement, we start um, weaning off of that. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of just go along <clears throat> and your body's gonna tell you when it's time when it's in need and we teach you how to look for those kinds of signs and symptoms and the benefits of acupuncture is that it's accumulative uh -huh. so if you've had acupuncture sometime in in the past when you go to have acupuncture again the body recognizes it and uptakes it very quickly and your results are much much faster so um, so that's how I would treat an acute problem a chronic or a long-term problem, sometimes with acupuncture, it brings things up and out. So sometimes the patient experiencing experiences a worsening of, of symptoms before it gets better uh -huh. because it's, it's, it's ridding your body of it. So sometimes it'll just bring it up and out and you don't necessarily feel so great. Mm -hmm. So your first thought is, oh, this feels worse and I don't want to have acupuncture. Right. But it's bringing things up and out. So it's kind of like opening up a can of worms when you're dealing with a chronic condition, mm -hmm. but that's very temporary and it phases out. And so then you get to a point when you're treating something of a chronic nature, once the symptomatology disappears, then you may be good or you come, you come back for maintenance every now and again, maybe it's once a month. But the best thing about acupuncture or when you should have acupuncture is seasonally. As the season changes, that's when you wanna have acupuncture. So you wanna get ahead of like allergies. If you have allergies in the springtime, uh -huh. then you need to come in the winter and have a treatment for allergies in the springtime. To prevent the occurrence, right? Yes, or to de decrease how harsh of allergy symptoms you have in the springtime. I see. Yeah. And so when patients come to you for regular acupuncture mm -hmm. and they get better and better results as time goes. Is that because it's opening up those energy channels and keeping them flowing properly? What What is the, yeah, like the, I don't know, the science behind that? So there's a few things that are occurring. So we talked about the stagnation of energy. Mm -hmm. So once the channels start opening up, um, you become a lot more sensitive to the needles. So when we place the needles in, you may have a sensation right away. Mm -hmm. When energy is stagnant or low, you when we insert the needle, you, you can't feel anything. And so from the, the pers practitioner's perspective is that once you insert the needle, you're drawing their chi or energy to the needle. So you, I'm inserting it and I'm actually inserting, twisting, and I'm going in an in and an out 
motion uh -huh. and I'm drawing their chi to the needle and sometimes it takes time and once it occurs the needle gets real tight and then the patient will feel either a sharp sensation or a very um, heavy or sense of fullness underneath the acupuncture point uh -huh. and you want to get to that point because <clears throat> it makes the acupuncture treatment much more effective I see and then as a practitioner you just want to be sensitive so a person like myself fair skin, fair hair, we're very sensitive, so the acupuncture has to be much more gentle. I see. A dark skin person, you can kind of fire the needles in um, much, uh, they don't have the same kind of sensation. So you want to deliver the acupuncture uniquely to each person. I see. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And what would you consider a high risk patient for either one of these practices? High risk. Okay, so for acupuncture, a high risk would be somebody who's on blood thinners to the point where they're bruising super easily. Um, then we would need to take caution and if they're gonna bleed, um, acupuncture may not be the best form of care. Um, people are on blood thinners and I do acupuncture, but they don't show any signs of bruising or skin where you, you, you have seen people on on blood thinners yeah. where their skin is very bruised, very paper thin, yeah. um, that we need to take precautionary that way. Uh -huh. And we either you know, do an experimentation with acupuncture, um, or we just don't do it at all, or we change the way that we do acupuncture. Instead of using needles, we could use electronic acupuncture, we could use laser, we could use acupressure. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's there, where there's a will, there's a way. Right. And we just find what the best, um, mode or application is based on the patient's condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about with adjustments? Do you, are there any patients that maybe you would adjust differently than the traditional type of adjustment yes. approach? Everyone is treated uniquely. So even people who have had fusions and uh, degenerative disc disease or um, very severe arthritis, you can still be treated. You just treat it very differently. Mm -hmm. So we don't go in and do a hard adjustment on um, a joint that's been fused, but you can adjust above and below it. Mm -hmm. If the body's very frail, then we may use um, mobilization as opposed to an adjustment, or we use the activator, which is an instrument assisted adjustment, or we do a lot of stretching and body work and maybe put the the body in that position and just wait and hold. And sometimes the body will just release um, on its own very, very gently. We just mm -hmm. encourage it. Um, so there's a lot mm -hmm. of benefit and you don't necessarily have to be afraid. You just have to be with a practitioner that knows and um, will give you the treatment according to your body's needs. And. Um and do you ever do like imaging on patients or have them go out for imaging? Is there, what, what times would you do that? Yeah, occasionally um, I do imaging. Um, if I, during the history, I suspect that they have a fracture or some other kind of contraindication as to why I shouldn't adjust them. Mm -hmm. um, I do like to start out with mostly with x-ray because um, I, can, I can see that, I can see alignment issues. Sometimes it requires MRI. Um, a lot of times I'll either refer them out to, and I do refer them out because I, I don't have the x-ray inside my office anymore. Yeah. Um, I prefer not to be personally radiated, but um, I do have the education and certification to take x-rays and to read x-rays. I see. But I refer it out. Um, and then I do still read the x-rays myself because we read reports very differently than the radiologist will read them. Um, and again, we'll just schedule out for an MRI. And a lot of times I'll just tell them to go to the PCP and ask, ask for these yeah. if, they, if we need to go that route and then their insurance will pay for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, any way it needs to be done, um, it, it can get done if we need, if we need to. Yeah. yeah, and then depending on what the results are would depend on how you approach treatment, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, generally when you kind of know what you're doing and you have a lot of experience, you can kind of feel when a, when a joint shouldn't be adjusted. It just doesn't feel right mm -hmm. and it will signal to my thought process there's something more going on. Sometimes the patient just 
it hurts or it doesn't feel right and their body will communicate and we don't follow through with an adjustment because their body um, is twitching or spasming and their, bo their body's telling me no. And so we know, hey, okay, we can't carry through with the adjustment at this particular time or in this particular fashion. Mm -hmm. So we either change what we're doing or we hold off on that. And then would you maybe do an acupuncture treatment to alleviate the pain or whatever? Yeah, they might acupuncture, be with? Yeah. soft tissue. If I can stretch it, we'll stretch it. Uh -huh. um, and then maybe we just do some acupressure on it. Just wh wherever the patient's um, ability to kind of let you in, that's that's how we start. And then we move deeper at if if and when we can. I see. Yeah. And so now I want to transition to your weight loss program. Okay. I'm really intrigued with this. And I know I've helped you a little bit with a couple of your patients. Absolutely. And yes. so in that whole process, I learned a little bit about it. I was pretty impressed with how this whole thing works. So yeah. um, let's just start doing with an overview of how this works and what it's all about. Okay. So um, the Body contouring and, and weight loss is um, something that it's technology based and when we talk about technology based is that we utilize uh, a light source and I'll get a little bit more into that and I've always wanted to bring this into my practice and I just had to have um, find the financial backing to do this mm -hmm. so I brought it into the practice in 2019 and the reason I brought it in is because Diet and exercise with patients alone doesn't work. They don't have the discipline, and usually people don't really know how to diet and exercise when mm -hmm. we're actually trying to burn fat. So um, I brought this into my practice. So um, the kind of the technology part of it has to do with um, after we do a history and examination and talk about what their goals are, then when we get into the treatment, it's um, a process using lights. Uh, they are an LED light based, but it's the source of the light and how many joules, which is the strength of the light. And what it does is it's a photochemical reaction that occurs the moment you turn the lights on. So what's happening, it's kind of te technical, but um, the light is a non-coherent light source. And why that's important is because it's going to stay around the subcutaneous level where the fat actually is. Okay. And then what it does is it, it makes the fat cell um, permeable and it opens it up. So think about the fat cell like a big fat juicy grape and we're going to open up that fat cell and the contents come out and they go between the cells. So what we're doing is we're actually shrinking the fat cell. So when people are first born, you, you have the same amount of fat cells. They expand and they contract. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we're not killing any fat, and that's why I liked this concept, is because I didn't want to kill fat cells because they play an important role. Hormones are stored in the fat cell, uh, fat cellular vitamins are stored in the fat cell, toxins are stored in the fat cell, so they have a purpose and we don't want to kill them, so we actually shrink them. I see, mm -hmm. yeah. And so we're gonna go check this out right now. <laughs> so we're doing laser lipo demonstration today. And this is Beverly and I'm Dr. Rebecca Faulkner. So please lay down. Okay, so we're gonna start with the legs. So I'm gonna have you bend your knees. There you go. And then we'll have you bend this knee. Describe this as we go along. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just gonna lift this, and is it okay to open? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So we're gonna just bring it down. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And then this is the abdominal, and we're going to place it across her stomach and back. So roll towards me. Good. And then roll away. There you go. Perfect. And then these smaller are for the lymph system. So we're gonna place those right on the inguinal area of the lymph nodes. 
and then we're going to turn it on. So when the lights are on, it's for seven minutes uh, for per area, and we're going to also do the arm second. And the lights, it's a photochemical reaction, and the lights stay at the superficial dermal layer where the fat actually is. And what it does is it opens up the fat cell and the fat cell becomes permeable for 24 to 48 hours. Then the contents go out between the cells and then the lymph system picks it up and finally it goes to the liver and the excretion is through the fecal route. So most patients can lose two to six dresser pant sizes in just six weeks and they can lose anywhere from five to 11 inches. So this will go on for seven minutes. <laughs> so this is part two. So we're going to take these out and we're going to later put them up high on the, the lymph area for the upper body. So we're just going to put these here and then we're going to take the one from the leg and we're going to place it around the arm. Okay. And then you can just bring your arm down. And we're going to stretch it over the body. And then finally, we're going to put these up through here. And then we're just going to do a double session with the stomach area. I'm just going to lift it just a little higher. There we go. And we'll just turn it on again for an additional seven minutes. And then, okay, so we're almost done with part one, so we're going to take these off. And this is happening right away. So when the lights are on and that reaction happens, it starts right now and it'll be this way for 24 to 48 hours. So sometimes your body, you may feel a little bit warm and you're actually burning fat right now. So you don't want to go home and, and eat. You want to wait about an hour and a half. Okay. And then for part two, we're going to go into another room and we'll demonstrate the whole body vibration. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is the whole body vibration plate. The plate is going to vibrate up and down, side to side, and in this kind of pattern. What we use this for is to further activate the lymph system. And this is also used for toning and tightening the body, where next door with the lights, we use that for the fat, cellulite, um, stretch marks, and scar tissue, gut inflammation, and back pain. It's all FDA approved for. And then this is the second component. So the patient will exercise for 15 minutes. And are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So you're just going to come stand on the platform. And I'm going to change the mode here. When you're ready, you just hit the start stop button. <clears throat> there you go. So I'll just kind of film as you want. <laughs> Squats? Yeah. And then maybe slow down, just to do them slow. Probably do about 15 if you can. This is also really good for improving your balance and fall prevention as well. And as we stated earlier, 15 minutes of exercise is equivalent to an hour because all the muscle fibers are being recruited as you're exercising. In place? Yeah. And then you want to use the pad. Oh, the pad? Yeah. Yeah, that's better on your arms. Do you remember how to do the plank? <laughs> okay. On the elbows, this way. There you go. Good. And then I just want to have a head up and just keep your keep yourself nice and tight. When you get tired, you can come down into a, yeah a half plank and just hold and then keep your head up. There you go. 
this is really good for the whole core and the stomach for strengthening as well as toning and tightening the abdomen area. Starting to feel it yet? Yes. I'm going to burn later. <laughs> That's really good too because now it's getting her back and her arms as well. So when you feel like the next time is rest time, you can come up and start lunges. You have it? Oh, okay. So what you'll do is you'll put your foot in the center of the plate and then your lunge is going to be like bending and forward, and you use this, yeah, to help with your balance. Uh, not so much just down, but you want a little forward momentum and down, so it's forward and down. There you go. Um, yeah, that's Tilt it more? No, no. There you go. Right here? Mm-hmm. And just slow them down. Just go slow. You'll do about 15 on each side. So you can feel it and then feel how... You sure it's not the full body twerk? <laughs> yeah, it is the twerk. <laughs> All right, 15. Okay. You feeling the burn? <gasps> I'm going to hurt later. The last time I went... So this is good because we're actually working you out harder. Well, I haven't done the lunch. Last time I did the planks, that's what I do the whole time. And you did planks the whole 15 minutes? Well, just about. Oh. <laughs> and we, we haven't done the bridge. I haven't worked with you yet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. We'll have to do the bridge next. Um, so I got my stance. Yeah. I was going to say, you got to put another quarter in the machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, us older people remember when the hotel beds vibrated. <laughs> Put the coins in the old Wickenburg Hotel in, in Wickenburg. I was just thinking about the little horsies outside the grocery, out, out front of the grocery store. That's but right. Now you're bringing like way old school, way old school yeah. stuff in. It's probably before your time. Probably, yeah. <laughs> My grandparents were still alive. I could probably ask them. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom would know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> this is called Brain Tap. It's guided imagery and deep relaxation. We have many different tracks, um, but this particular one is for weight loss. And when the program's on, you simply put the headset on. And, and then you put the visor over and you close your eyes, okay? And typically, I'm gonna open this back up. Typically, we go into an anti-gravity chair so you can relax. There we go. And then you proceed to lay here for about 20 minutes and just relax. Dr. Patrick Porter will be talking to you and you try really just not to focus on what's being said, but just relax. In the context of weight loss, it helps you to make better choices in terms of maybe the foods that you're choosing to eat, uh, making sure that you actually do your exercise, and it just makes it so that it's easier with less um, resistance to doing these, these things. The technical term is making new neuronal pathways and so it's helping you to program your subconscious. And when you're awake, that's your conscious. And the subconscious or the conscious will carry out what the subconscious has programmed. So we can use this for 
anxiety, depression, weight loss, smoking, any kind of, um, of the addictions, and also just for vibrant health. There's many, many programs available. This is just nice and convenient. It takes about 20 minutes and you don't necessarily have to be an expert meditator. This will actually put you through meditation and you get the benefits of meditation immediately instead of having to learn how to meditate and take time. So it takes the time aspect away and it, it changes the body as soon as you um, have a session you start changing immediately. So that's kind of the way it works. And I was really impressed with the whole process. Yeah, it's pretty from, exciting. From beginning to end. And your patients have nothing but good things to say about their results. So yeah. I was yeah, I was pretty excited about that. So um, how many sessions do they typically need and why? Yeah, well, the whole process is actually kind of amazing. And why we brought it into the office in the first place is because you get results right away with uh -huh. each treatment and you actually get results where um, we take measurements as you saw in the video before and after and you start seeing the differences right away so you're not waiting two or three months to see the differences like you do in another type of therapy uh, cool sculpting cool sculpting actually kills the fat and then you have to wait two to three months to see your results mm -hmm. um, but with this you get results um, right away yeah. so when you were asking about how many treatments um, it's basically has to do with when we do the examination and we find out what your percent body fat is what your goals are what what we're trying to um, obtain uh, it, it depends so it can be as few as nine treatments and then most people get 18 treatments okay so it's a six-week program and they come in Monday Wednesday Friday and the reason we do that is because that fat cell stays permeable for 24 to 48 hours. So you're burning fat after the lights are done. You're burning fat as the rest of the day goes. Uh -huh. So um, so it stays it stays with you. We don't need to go back to back. So that's why we go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. 18 sessions seems to be the point for most people. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're like 53% body fat. Um, you're going to need more, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a whole other set of circumstances that's a little more in depth than um, most people that are looking for losing inches and um, and losing body fat. When we're into the deep weight loss, um, it's a it's this plus a little bit more in depth. I see. So the program is really custom designed to the patient. Absolutely, yeah. everybody's unique. Um, with their health and their circumstances and where where they're where they're at on the the scale of um, fitness and and things like that. Mm -hmm. So and so they come in for these sessions and mm -hmm. about how long are they in the office? So once we get through the um, consultation and um, examination. Then they're in when they're truly through the treatment program. They're in there anywhere between 30 minutes to 50 minutes, mm -hmm. and it just has to do with how much of the program they're doing. So the first part, which is the lights, uh, you're in there probably about 15 about 15 minutes in there, and then we go into the whole body vibration, which is an additional. 15 minutes which you are actually doing your exercise on uh -huh. and you're doing the toning and tightening so in the lights you're getting the fat cell opened up and you're shrinking shrinking the fat cell so once you do that you want the area toned and tightened mm -hmm. and then the third part is if you do the headset which is for the deep relaxation and guided imagery uh -huh. then that's an additional 20 minutes so you can be anywhere from 30 minutes to 50 minutes and sometimes a little bit longer on days where we need to talk a little bit more about um, maybe your dietary habits, how are you doing with your exercise, are you drinking enough water, and any kind of um, you know problems along the way that you may be experiencing so that we can uh, make sure that we stay on target and, and take care of those situations as they arise. And so what is the treatment for when the patient goes home? What do they have to follow? Well, for the, for the best results, I ask the patients um, 
they need to stay hydrated, mm -hmm. okay? And the body composition scale tells us your hydration level, and we like you at about 45%. So I tell people that they need to drink at least 50% of their body weight. So if you weighed 100 pounds, you need 50 ounces of water. Okay. Okay. So they need to drink a lot of water and drink it throughout the day. You don't just chug at one time. You want to drink throughout the day. Uh -huh. I've asked them to exercise a little bit um, between visits. I ask a minimum if they'll go out and walk for, you know, maybe 30 minutes, 15 minutes out, 15 minutes back. Mm -hmm. The more exercise that they engage in, the proper exercise, the fat burning exercise, which um, the context, we don't really need to get into the specifics, but it needs to be fat burning exercises. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and then, um, and then I just make sure that maybe we need to tweak a little bit dietary wise, like maybe somebody drinks too much caffeine or they drink soda or maybe they drink uh, or they eat some high fat or just some, some food. So we start to try to gently modify their diet. Some people just need the technology part of it and they got the other stuff on their own. Yeah. So the people who do this get the greatest results. People who do a little bit get medium results and sure. people who do nothing, they still get results but very minimal results. Right, Yeah. so the treatment in office works. It's just how much they do on their own which will speed up the results. Yeah, and it, there'll be greater results. So like you mm -hmm. can lose anywhere from two to six dress or pants sizes. Uh -huh and you can expect to lose anywhere from like two to 11 inches. It just depends on your body. Like somebody like my frame, well, there's no way I'm gonna lose 11 inches. Right. You know, I may lose a couple couple inches, maybe even one or two inches, but when you're getting rid of fat, it makes a huge difference into how your clothes fit, mm -hmm. how your physique looks to you. Right. Um, and so that's very different than somebody who's at 53% body fat. They're, they're the ones who are gonna lose 11 inches and um, if they do what we need to do. <laughs> yeah, right, and that's the, that's, <laughs> that's the key. Yeah, that's the key <laughs> and that's the challenge. So it sounds like you get a variety of patients, like people that just wanna be ready for the pool, mm -hmm. right, in summer. People, maybe somebody wants to fit into a wedding dress. <laughs> yeah. Or people that really have a lot of work to do in terms of weight loss. Yeah, that they want to make a significant difference. And, um, and these are the people that come in where they've had um, a doctor tell them that they need to have the bypass or the, the stomach sleeve and things like that. Right. Um, as long as they can still exercise, I prefer patients not to do the sleeve and yeah. do it um, do it in a healthy manner. So we would do a combination of both with the lights and then I may take on the rest of it or I would refer them to another practitioner to take on a little bit more in-depth um, weight loss and insulin resistant and things like that. Sure. And then maybe even the hypnotherapist involved to uh -huh. really help them change the way that they're thinking, the, their habits, and really give them a, a life-changing experience because that's what they're actually looking to do. They yeah. need to change their life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we wanna see happen for them. And the headset with the it's like self-hypnosis, right? Yes, that, yes. Yeah. It, um, it basically helps people get into meditation without any experience at all and to benefit from it immediately. Mm -hmm. So someone who doesn't know how to meditate, we're lucky for them to sit for five minutes to relax. Right. Well, this will take you through a 20, 22-minute meditation and start um, sub to program that subconscious uh -huh. and you'll start carrying the um, correct habits in your the very next day into your daily life whether it helps you to choose the right foods or help you to stay away from the wrong foods right. you'll just be more relaxed about it and you'll just carry on with it it won't be a struggle oh I have to go work out oh I have to drink this water oh I need to stay away from this food it just makes you go oh yeah I don't need that food and yep I need to go exercise now and you just do it because it feels like the right thing to do and you're not dealing with the struggles or that little voice that's telling you I don't want to do this right you just do it because you know it's good for you and you just have the ease to do it
or I want to eat this and not that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it's just a way to get people started and on their way to a new healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, it'll be with them the rest of their life because they're taking new habits, whether it's dietary habits, exercise habits, and they're just really engaging in self-care and starting the road to a new, healthier self. Right. And this is lifelong. Like, it, it'll be permanent unless you go back to your poor eating habits and poor mm -hmm. lifestyle, which why I like my program is if people choose to go back to an unhealthy lifestyle, when they gain their weight back, they're going to gain it all nice and uniform. So I don't have to worry about pitted appearance. Uh -huh. And I don't have to worry about scars from liposuction. Right. I don't have to worry about the cool sculpting and the burns that people get from cool sculpting. Right. This is just a healthier and less expensive way to, um, to get to the body that you want and to carry on the lifestyle that, that you're choosing to. It just gives you the, the knowledge and the tools and the help to do that. And once you got it, you have it. Some people just need that jump start, right? Actually, it's a jump start. Yeah. And then sometimes some people want to maintain. So some people want to still drink wine or eat ice cream. So they come in one, once or twice a month and have a maintenance uh -huh. treatment. Sure. And that just maintains them while they still get to have the kind of um, dietary lifestyle that they want to choose and that they mm -hmm. don't want to give up. Right. So we just have to find a happy medium. Everything is just about consistency and mm -hmm. moderation is what we're looking for. Yeah. In everything. That's everything in life. Moderation. It, and even extreme health focus can be a pathology. Yeah. Like people just, they get really obsessed. crazy about and obsessed about it that it just, it kind of works against what we're really trying to accomplish in life, right? Yeah, all consuming. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's too much of a good thing. That, that's a true statement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and there is such a thing as too thin. You know, people- oh, absolutely. Yeah, people don't really understand that, but um, it's very, very true. And it's another, it's a talk for another time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's just as challenging on that end as it is with excess too. So, yeah, that used to be the thing that women sought after the new supermodels came out with these super thin looks. Twiggy started it, that was yeah. her name, and yeah. back in the 60s, and then everybody wanted to be thin, right? Well, then we started learning how that really wasn't the healthiest approach to oh, absolutely. a physique. Yeah. Absolutely, and people still tr struggle with it today. Yeah. you know. And then the physician's idea of the you know, stomach sleeve and stuff doesn't doesn't address the hole underneath as to why we're this way in the first place. Right. There's a reason why people got to that point. Yeah. So if you don't address it, they'll just gain weight back regardless. Yeah. Physically, you know, something going on with your chemistry, something going on mentally, right? Emotionally, you've got to balance all of those things. You can't just do a stomach sleeve and expect the person to maintain. Right. You know. Yes. Yeah. They'll, they can, they'll lose the weight, but are they really healthy? No. That's the key, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And the answer is no. Right. <laughs> yes. I could have answered that. Yeah. And so it seems that addressing subconscious programs is really important with getting well on any level with any kind of treatment, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's a great way to get yourself prepared for anything in life, mm -hmm. you know, whether you know, you want to you want to change your financial situation, or your work situation, or your physical health, or um, you know something maybe that you maybe you deal with anger, and mm -hmm. so there's so many different um, conditions that you can use this for that will just make it so much easier for you mm -hmm. to to accomplish, and it makes our job easier. Too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and so the patients back to the weight loss program they. Yeah. Come in for about 18 sessions, right? That's correct. And then some of them will maintain, like come in once a month for a session, or how does the, yeah. how do you find people like to maintain? Yeah, so sometimes some of them are coming in um, twice twice a month, some come in once a month. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes if they're really obese, um, they have to do the program for longer, uh -huh. and um, so we 
we have to find some uh, different type of um, program for them. They, they need more than 18 sessions, yeah. but it's a really good place for them to start, and then they start making some of the ha habit changes that and behavioral changes that they need to do, and then maybe they are coming in regularly, but maybe on a maintenance schedule. Maybe they're not on the three times a week. That's the initial 18 sessions, uh -huh. but maybe they're coming in twice a week or once a week. It just all uniquely depends on them and how much progress they make. Uh -huh. And we go right back to the body composition and the body measurements and that, and we'll know where they're struggling. Right. You know, and that's why we have the importance of learning how to exercise for fat burning mode. It's very different than aerobic mode. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't understand that and they're actually doing the wrong exercise. They're exercising, but it's the wrong exercise when right. you're trying to burn fat. It's a whole different ball game. It is, yeah. And that's when, that's what you come in for and that's the education that you're gonna receive mm -hmm. is um, why we're doing what we're doing for now. And then once you're at that point, then we sw switch modes and put you into getting aerobically fit or you know physically fit or even more muscular fit depending on what you're looking for sure type yeah. of thing and it's true what you said is that it, getting into shape and losing weight is not as easy as people think it is it's not just cutting calories because that could put you into starvation mode yeah it's not just exercising because your body will adapt and you know, I see people, I've been working out in the gym for years, and I see people look exactly the same as they did 10 years ago. They're, yeah. they're doing the same exercises, they're not really yeah. advancing themselves, they're probably not minding their diet, and yeah. it really is not as easy as people think it is. Yeah, absolutely, and um, you know, mainly in the practice too, with particularly with the weight loss, what I find most is that um, people actually don't eat. They think if they don't eat, they're going to lose weight. And right. that's the biggest kind of lie and myth because their body actually shuts down. Right. And we have to teach them that, no, you have to eat to actually get your metabolism going to lose weight, which sounds counterintuitive. Right. But again, that's where more in-depth education comes from. And once they understand that, my hope for them is the light bulb goes off and they get it. Uh -huh. And once they get it, then the... I know they have it for life and they can share it with someone else mm -hmm. and and that makes me feel really fulfilled right so I get really invested when someone comes in and they want to make this change I'm as invested in their goal as they are mm -hmm. and I'll do everything I possibly can as well as encourage and I try to find where any problems are so that we can get rid of it and they'll have the success that they're looking for. Yeah. And I think that's helpful. I think you you know, you kinda need a coach along the way to help to help you. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. we're we're not expected to know as a person, you're not expected to know everything. And if you did, then you wouldn't be here. Right. You wouldn't be dealing with <laughs> this. And that's why we have um, experts in the field that know that know these things and mm -hmm. know how to get you there. And um, as a client or a patient that's what you're actually, that's what you're paying for. And, mm -hmm. and that's what you're gonna receive. Just like, I'm not an investor, so I need somebody to help me invest. Sure, you know? right. Either so that, that or I gotta do all the research and, <laughs> and things like that. But people need to lose weight in the moment they need to lose weight. Right. It, sometimes you can't wait any longer. That maybe it's a health condition. Maybe you're a type two diabetic. There's a yeah. lot of reasons yeah. why people end up where they end up. Absolutely. And it's not like, okay, you have a group of people that are overweight. Well, there's a different reason for each person as why they ended up that way. Yeah. Whether it's maybe they were deprived of food as a child, so now it, or it's a comfort thing, or Absolutely. they have a disease that's preventing them from really optimizing their health and yeah. their fitness, right? Yeah. Or you get the crazy people that go to clinics and they put them on a, a very limited calories and they give them shots, right? The results from this program are absolutely permanent. What brings them back to the clinic is maybe their lifestyle that doesn't completely keep them moving in the right direction. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So if people want to enjoy certain kinds of foods and things, or maybe they're not exercising as much as they should, then they'll come in to maintain. So they'll come in either once a month or uh, twice a month 
that kind of thing to maintain, but, but you don't have to. If you adopt the lifestyle and, and you're living it, you shouldn't need to have maintenance. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So it just gets them on the right track and then they can maintain it as long as they want to on their own. Yeah. If they Absolutely. manage their diet and maybe do the meditation. Well, not maybe, but of course. Yeah. And the exercise. Yes, yeah, and exercise. We all need to exercise. It's, you know, it's imperative that we all eat, choose proper foods, mm -hmm. get some exercise, get some sleep, do some meditation, because we have to be healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. Right. And I agree. You got, all of those have to be addressed. You can't have more of one and less of another because mm -hmm. you'll have an imbalance. Yeah. And that's what we're always striving is to be balanced. So sometimes we may need to do a little more meditation or we may need to do a little more physical activity mm -hmm. in order to bring about the balance. Yeah, absolutely. I have patients that come to me, they want to lose weight. Yeah. And as a doctor, I do comprehensive blood work to look at every biochemical yeah. process in the body. And we get to the root cause of what is causing them to not be able to lose weight. I often have patients that say, I didn't do anything different, but for the last couple months or so, I've been gaining weight. And so then we know there's something metabolic, maybe hormonally that's going on with the patient. Absolutely. So they come in, we'll do the blood work, we'll get to the bottom line of what's going on. But then sometimes my patients say, well, I'm, I would like to be a little leaner. I would like a better result. Then I tell them, well, there's more to it than just, you know, being on hormone replacement therapy, for example, or, you know, improving your thyroid. There's so much more to getting the results that you want in terms of fitness, right? Oh, absolutely. Than just getting your blood work done and so forth. And I had a patient not too long ago that was... She's been a patient for a while and she was wanting a better result. And as I was looking through her chart, the compliance was here and there. And so we talked a little bit about that. But compliance is key, right? Because it, what we're doing works as yeah. long as they continue to do it. Absolutely. Right. And then compliance with themselves, you know, at right. home. Right. And just having, choosing the lifestyle mm -hmm. and doing what they know they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So. I, um, I interviewed an IFBB pro last week, and or it's been a couple weeks now, for the podcast. And we were talking about this, how it's not that easy to get the results you want. It's not as, as common sense as you think it is, yeah. right? Yeah. So when you're going to lose weight, it's not just, like we said, reducing calories. That'll work against you. Or doing a certain type of exercise, because you'll adapt over time. Yeah. It's... It's a whole collection of really knowing how to design your life in a way that works. And implementing these kinds of strategies helps to get the patient the result that they want quicker and more efficiently. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other weight loss programs are, that are out there and why they don't work. Yeah. So there's a few that come to mind. So. Um, there's clinics that actually do uh, injections and they put you on a calorie restricted diet of uh -huh. like five to 700 calories and patients lose 20, 20 pounds in a month. And the problem with that is they're putting your body into ketoacidosis. Right. And what they don't tell you is that yes, you lose the weight, but the key part of this is that once you lose all the weight, your brain says, hey, there's a deficit. I just lost 20 pounds. So it will signal to your brain to eat and you'll gain your weight back and then some. Uh -huh. And um, I just don't like stressful events and that is heavily stress on the body. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a healthy way to lose weight. Um, it's a quick temporary, temporary fix, mm -hmm. um, but not for long term. And the cost of what it does to your body um, to me, I don't think it's a viable option, yeah. and I would not choose it. It's not sustainable, right? It's not sustainable. Because you didn't learn how to change your habits long term. No. Right. No. And, um, and it's just not, it's, it's a stressful way to reduce the weight of, of the body, and I just don't think that's the healthiest choice or the mm -hmm. correct choice to go about weight loss. Right. 
And then, of course, there's the, the most expensive way is people do liposuction. Oh. So that's a very costly approach. And it's also, um, again, they're destroying and killing the fat. So they suck the fat out. But what, what they don't tell you is that um, when there's not a fat cell and something needs to be deposited in, into the fat cell, mm -hmm. it's going to go looking for it. So it's going to go and find it if you've done a tummy tuck. It's not going to find a fat cell in your stomach. So it's going to find it in your hips, your thighs, the inside of your thighs, mm -hmm. the knees, the elbows. And um, you get a very gelatinous type of, of fat that's very much more um, jelly-like than before you've had liposuction. Oh, really? So I, I get patients that come in all the time after they've had a tummy tuck because long-term, um, it's not doing what they were told it would do. Uh -huh. And so, they, yeah, you've got your flat stomach, but then they go in and make an inc incision. So sometimes uh -huh. your scar um, doesn't heal kind of the way we would like it to. And scar tissue's on the inside as well as on the outside. Right. So sometimes that'll hold the tissue a little bit different, and that's not exactly the look that you were going for. Uh -huh. But they want that quick fix, so they go do the liposuction. And I just don't feel like that's um, a very viable solution as well. I just don't think it's a healthy way to do uh, weight loss. And also people do it repetitively. Right. So I'm not happy with that result as well. Um, and the cost and just the health of it. I don't think it's a healthy way to do it. They didn't really learn anything from it in terms of no. I mean, there's a reason they got that way to begin with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get right back to you that way. And it's going to look different because they've had the work done on their stomach, but the rest of their body. So if you haven't learned the healthy lifestyle, the dietary choices, right. and the fact that we all have to exercise, then you know, you're just going to repeat it again in the same place and or new places in your body. And it should be not only about improving your looks, but improving your health as well. Oh, yeah. Because it didn't do anything to improve their health if they're doing these crash diet programs or getting liposuction mm -hmm. or whatever else is out there that people are participating in with this misconception that it's going to make them all better. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And it doesn't. No. Nope. And yeah. then we also touched upon it. We talked about cool sculpting and uh -huh. the way that they go about it is that they use cryotherapy, which is ice, and basically they kill the fat, uh -huh. and then you're supposed to wait two to three months for the body to do the process of removing the dead fat cells to see your results. And it's very costly, and sometimes it doesn't work. So, mm -hmm. um, and if they happen to burn, burn your skin, which um, it looks like a brick, the burn places, um, you cannot have more cool sculpting. You have to go right into liposuction. I see. And again, that um, <clears throat> program is very costly. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if they do anything dietary wise with the person. I think it's all cosmetic. Yeah. So they're not getting to the root of why we're this way. And uh, so long term, uh, you're probably not going to have the results that you'd like to see as well. And they charge per area, meaning if you've got your thighs to do, your stomach, your yeah. arms, maybe your chest, um, they charge for each individual area. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can get costly. Very costly. Yeah. And that's another reason why I chose the program I did is because it's cost effective. Right. And I don't charge per area. I just take the patient and basically what their need is. If we need to do the, thigh, the thighs, the legs, the stomach, the hips. The arms, well, I just do it all, and it's all part of the cost of the program. Right, and it's safe and effective. Yep, mm -hmm. without those negative side effects. Yeah. There are a few contraindications uh, for people, uh -huh. so you cannot do this program if you're on a pacemaker, um, if you have liver disease, and um, and if you're uh, photosensitive, epilepsy. So if you have epilepsy, oh, right. um, you cannot do this program. Yeah, those lights are pretty bright. Yeah. That's yeah. why the some of your patients wear the sunglasses. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. yeah. So it, it so it's con those are the contraindications, mm -hmm. and we usually find that out in the um, history and the consultation. Sure. So if that's the case, we just find another way to help people get to their goals. We just won't use this particular system. Uh -huh. We won't use that on them. So we have to find 
another way. It doesn't mean that they can't lose weight and get in shape. We just have to do it a different way. So, so Dr. Faulkner, this has been a, an intriguing interview with you. Where can people find you? Okay, well, thank you again for having me. And people can find me um, through my website. So that's at westmesachiropractor.com. And you can look through the website there. I do have a Facebook a business page. And um, the name of my office is Natural Health Acupuncture and Chiropractic. So you can find it through there. So I'm located at 2045 South Vineyard, Suite 139, Mesa, Arizona, 85209. Very good. <laughs> well, if any of you are interested in seeking Dr. Faulkner's services, I highly encourage that you seek her out as an alternative practitioner. And thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>